Slimax Media is proud to present the interview from the creator of Rock God Tycoon, available on Steam right now. Interviewed by none other than Mad Phoenix from Cymax TV, right here on Cymax Radio, the sci-fi voice of the universe. Hello everybody, this is Matt Phoenix and today I'm having the pleasure of interviewing Seabass, creator of the game Rock God Tycoon. Hello, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. So, Rock God Tycoon. It's a fairly new game, I'd say. And your objective is basically starting out to build a rock band, you can hire people, and the better you want to get signed in by a by a big studio basically go on like how to call it uh we rock live traveling around the country having gigs earning money and getting fans all over the place right yep you got it right you got the nail on the head <laughs> so um I've heard it's out of early access very recently. Are there currently like any features you wanna still add? Because what I've seen so far it looks pretty solid to me. Thank you. Um yeah, we still have a few stuff we plan on adding. Um so right now we plan on adding festivals, that's what a big thing we wanna do, which is like uh they're like big gigs, so they're they're like normal gigs but they only occur at certain times throughout the year and you have to be big enough as a band to be invited. And there's like supporting acts, so it's like an actual festival. Um, and we also have plans of adding like yearly award ceremony uh, ceremonies, so you can get like you know best album of whatever year. Um, yeah, I mean there's more than just that. I mean there's a huge list, but those are the two big ones at the moment we have planned. Okay, um, is it like a festival where you play with other bands, where you compete with other bands, or? Will you also be able to like have your own, very own festival for your own band? Uh, it's a collaborative festival. So if you've ever like seen Woodstock or something like that, they or I mean, there's there's a bunch actually nowadays. But um, they they invite like five or six really big bands, and you know one will play an opening act, and then another one plays um, for the main show, and then they have a closing act, and they usually will do it over the course of a few days. So it's a bunch of bands, and you're just playing one, you're just one of the roles in this festival so it's not a competitive thing i see it sounds very interesting um but on the side of features what's your favorite feature so far what uh, did turn out especially like you've uh, planned it i think so far the best part has been the uh the songwriting in the game uh it actually turned out way better than i thought it would uh <laughs> I've never written like a like any sort of creation tools like that before, um, and specifically, it's difficult to do stuff with sound like that where you're trying to seamlessly connect patterns. So that was probably the the best turnout of all the features in the game so far. Mm -hmm. And I've also seen it's got Steam Workshop integration. Yeah, yeah, we just recently added that uh, as well to the songwriting. I thought it'd be a nice touch, and I'm glad I added it because it's really nice not having to write your own songs. You can kind of just download other users' songs and. It saves you a lot of time, and sometimes you hear like really cool uses of patterns. I didn't like. I didn't even expect the way people were using the songs, so it was really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, from when I checked recently, I've seen there are already over ninety songs on there. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, we were surprised by how many people actually were uploading. Hmm. But what's also what stuck out to me was compared to many of the other tycoon type games the art style how did you go about that one um so i i haven't done any of the art the artist is completely separate in a sense but um he when he went about it we, we actually had a prototype of this game a while ago and it was very similar but it was a lot more crude so we kind of went with that the original style we had tried and then we kind of just polished it up a little bit so we found we found a nice balance between like grimy and like i don't want to say professional but like 
It doesn't it doesn't look too unprofessional to where it's like displeasing, but it still has kind of a grimy style to it. Yeah, personally I like it a lot. Definitely well, sticks out to me. Hmm. But what did inspire you to make this game in the first place? Because even for tycoon type games, it seems like a fairly unusual thing to combine that with uh, the host of features you've put in so far. In the yeah, in yeah. Um, there was a game called Punkomatic. I never played it. My artist approached me with this idea. Um, you put little patterns together and you just wrote songs. And that's all the game was. And then there's other games out that were kind of like Rock God Tycoon, but there's one um, called Rock Tour Tycoon. Um, and all these games are super old. They're like early 2000s. And like, I think it was Rock Tour Tycoon well, was one of them, but it like, you could even save your game. So they all were like not badly done necessarily for the time, but they all had like crucial problems and the developers kind of just left the games. And we realized like, oh my God, there's a huge audience here that would love this kind of a game, especially if it was done right. And like, we both have the know how. So that's kind of where the idea came from. Mm hmm. So, um, the game's also getting continuously updated, what I've seen. Uh, how, how long you plan on keep working on it? Is there like any major, any major thing after the game you've planned so far? Like a bigger expansion outside from just adding more features to the main game or maybe even a sequel? Um, we don't exactly have a time frame on when we're going to stop working on it just yet. Uh, we, we don't have any plans of a sequel for sure. The game's been a pain to do. It's very large. As you've seen, there's a lot of features, um, especially for the size of our team. Um, so what we're, what we're planning right now is we really want to make this into like a really fantastic game. One that's going to stand out for the next 10, 15 years. Um, you know, people are, will keep going back to it because, you know, until... Until someone can do it better, like we want to make sure we have the best, um, and we just, we want to set the bar high for ourselves. So that's probably our plan: is just to really make it as replayable as possible and just one really good experience. And so I'm I'm gonna say at least the next like six months, probably could expect us to keep working on it, um, pretty consistently. Mm hmm. Hmm. What also might be interesting is. Would you have any ideas for maybe expanding the workshop support? Like have uh, other bands maybe competing against each other from other players? That would be really cool. And we have the billboard system in the game. So there's technically like rival bands in the game, which is another feature we may add. We're not sure yet. But um, between players, it's unlikely we would set that up um, just because people cheat. And I, I, that always ruins leaderboard games for me. <laughs> Yeah, but it would be nasty if you just have like a complete maxed out band against you. It, yeah, like nine, is there even a thing like? Bands. Well, okay, that would be really hard to beat, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, we we do have plans um in terms of work. Well, not plans. I I set up the system so there's a good chance we might add workshop support for like custom band logos. Um. Custom, custom instruments, cust maybe? Custom, may maybe with instruments. I'm not sure on that one, but it's possible. It's not impossible. Um, another one is cities. Um, someone even made a, you know, like the, the main map, it's like the USA. Someone mm -hmm. made a small mod version of it where it's like a turtle instead. It's kind of weird, but basically you can make your own maps with the way the okay. system is built. So that might eventually be added as well. So custom, you know, make Europe or whatever. Would it be possible to like have other maps connected to it via mods, so you could basically like mod something like a world tour in the end? It wouldn't be impossible to add that feature. Um, it's something we've talked about, so depending on the demand for it, it's possible. It would, uh, it would, well, it would certainly sound interesting, but I can see how it would be an, an immense, uh, immense amount of work. Seeing yeah. as every city needs its location, the cities themselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Say on if it's in the file, someone figured it out already. But like, you have to 
position every single dot on the map and then in the city you have to position all like the gigs and all the information like how many people show up at the audience and the price of the tickets and so it's kind of like a you know are if we add this are users even going to use it yeah um, it's it'd be a huge amount of work to even if the tools were rare in the game to actually make a new map yeah i see lots of games that add workshop support and then the workshop's completely dead and like I, I don't want to do that because then you know it's a bad time investment for the game when we could be adding other features that people might want over that instead. Mm -hmm. mm. If you that one's more about the development of the game, if you don't mind. Yeah. yeah. If you were to start from the beginning, as it's. Uh, your company Ember Wolf's first game, what would you make differently or do differently in the beginning? I, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of things I would have done differently. I think probably be more organized. I think that would be the number one thing. Um, approaching the project originally, we were like, oh, character customization sounds cool. Let's do that first. And then I was like, oh crap, how do you get to a screen? We need a main menu. And then we did a main menu. And then I'm like, oh no, now I need a that we don't have a new game screen yet. Okay, so now we need to add the new game screen and connect that to the character customization. And we kind of built the game like from the middle to the back to the front. And we, I really wish we had approached in a more organized, linear approach. Like setting up, we need this and this and this instead of noticing, oh, that one would actually be really useful right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And not, not going and then being like, oh, I just realized we're going through like 16 menus to change this one feature. I probably should have just made this feature first or, you know, kind of organize it better. Mm -hmm. um, but what did actually bring you, or the both of you, since you do have a you know, teammate in your company, what did bring you guys into game development in the first place? Uh, for my partner, he lived in Greece and um, not a lot of people in that area really go into game development, most of them kind of just take up whatever job they can find and they do that and uh, he really didn't want to grow up and, and end up like that so for him he really wanted to pursue art that's something he really loves to do um, specifically with games because he's a huge gamer so for him that's why I believe got him into art and game development for me when I was around 11 I got started with Game Maker and then I, I kind of taught myself that throughout the years um, and then around 18 I got kicked out of my house and I was like you know I, I think I should probably apply myself now because well, I have all, I have like seven, eight years of experience in making video games. I could probably make something pretty good. So around that time, I started, you know, really pursuing it. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, was it for you something you enjoyed doing, or was it in the end, like also a thing of necessity? It's both. Um, it, I wouldn't even say it's fifty-fifty though. It's like 80, 80 20 Like I, I much more enjoy making games than the money that comes out of it. But, you know, if money doesn't come out of it, I, I have to get a job because I'm not, if I'm homeless, I can't make games, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds reasonable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. I, I said, I don't want to sound money grubby. So, you know, for, for me, like, if we make a big paycheck, it's, you know, I'm not going to be mad about it. But, you know, I'm, I'm not going to make bad decisions for a game just for the sake of money. That's why we don't do microtransactions. That's kind of the reason we don't want to do a sequel because then we'd feel kind of bad. Like, I'd rather make this game really good. For the people that already bought it and uh, are invested. Mm hmm. Hmm. Is there maybe is there maybe an upcoming feature you want to tease a bit about, or you are allowed to tell us a little bit about about? Um. The uh, I would say the the festival system is a, gonna be the most exciting change. Um. There isn't a whole lot I've really hidden about it. I mean, it's, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be new. We're kind of redoing the whole map UI, so people can expect that soon. Um, the whole map mm -hmm. screens will look completely different. Uh, we're we're doing a lot of quality of life features along with that update, so the whole game is gonna feel a lot more refined. Um, I'd say in the next week or two. Mm -hmm. uh, that's really the only thing I can tease that, but yeah. Mm. 
May I ask a little bit of a different question? Uh, what do you think about the station, Cymax? Say it again? Sorry. Uh, what do you think about Cymax, uh, the station? So far, I'm actually really impressed. Um, I've only listened to a part of one broadcast so far, but I like the overall presentation of it, and you guys seem pretty well organized, which is something I've never Thank seen. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't, I don't really know what else to say. I mean, I, I'm impressed. <laughs> um, yeah, um, Actually, I'm curious, what uh, what game engine did you design the game in? Uh, we built the whole thing in Game Maker Studio 1.4, um, and then recently when Game Maker Studio 2 came out, we ported to that. Um, yeah, I think just that for the most part. Hmm. Do you think for development that 2.0 is going to have advantages for you? Because I can remember taking a look at Game Maker Studio when it first came out on Steam just right. couldn't really <laughs> I couldn't really get into it it was just it more of a curiosity thing yeah it wasn't impressive at the time um, and, and plus if you see like the ga the old Game Maker Studio IDE like the actual software you can see it looks very like Windows 95 um, <laughs> yeah it was it was a clunky mess it really was bad um, I mean, and Game Maker Studio 2 is not much different, but what they did is they completely redid the software uh, and like the front end, so the side where you know you type code, where you drag files, they completely re 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 rewrote that from the ground up, and so uh, yeah, it's a lot better now. It, it really has helped our development. We've only been switched to it for I'd say two or three months, but since I've switched to it, like doing anything is a lot faster. Hmm. Okay. Uh, actually, I think that's already it. If you don't have anything oh. to add, <laughs> I do not. Then, thank you for your time. I know it's been a rather short interview. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. And, yeah, that's been uh, the interview with Seabass. From Emberwolf and for his game Rock God Tycoon. You can pick it up right now at Steam for I believe eleven bucks, eleven euros yep. at least. Um and yeah. Definitely I'd say it's worth its money. So take a look and thank you for being here. Absolutely, thank you for having me again. Thank you.